We're on an impoundment chasing bass with bass guru Jace Ehrlich, who I think spends more time looking at a sounder screen than he does his wife. I do, spend, I do spend a bit of time looking at it. I spend more time looking at this thing, Nigel, than I do fishing. And um, you can see today we're running Insight Social Maps and there's an overlay there that gives you like a chart yep. and it's all graphed out. We can see everything. You can see all those points. You can see the old riverbed running through there. And just the smallest of features can hold fish. And I've changed the, the shading contours so that we've actually highlighted areas and we can go and check out all those areas. So we're just moving into one now. We'll go and have a look. So you, any day on the water, you said you spend a lot of time sounding. So just some of the key, the, guess the key tips for maybe some of the mistakes that the rest of us make in terms of we just fish at the first thing we see. So what, what's what's the program that you follow to find fish and then catch them? Yeah, I think it's exactly that. Just sound. Just put put a bit of time in on the sounding. Don't just pull up on a spot where you've been successful in the past. I've seen it before. I used to fish a lot of comps, and you'd see guys go straight to their spot where they thought the fish would be because they were there the day before. Whereas if you can just just not you know, rush to get those first casts in. Just take your time a little bit more. You might have to only move 50 metres or 100 metres from where all the other boats pull up, and you'll find bulk fish, and you've got them all to yourself, and you'll catch heaps. Oh, and I'll catch yep, him. Got him. Yep. Here we go. He's a half decent one. Oh, and hasn't he eaten that? Just no, my Got him on, nice. Yeah, that's good yeah. luck. Bravo. And I can tell by the track lines, obviously, you like following your contours. Yeah, contours play a big part. So whether it be uh, like an old riverbed running along and then you have your adjacent flats. And in this case here, we've moved a long way away from the riverbed bed because it's quite a long way there behind yeah. us. And you've got these big open flats there way behind us. And it's going to come up onto an underwater point here. And that's where we're coming in on all those other lines where we've been before. And you cruise a contour and then what are the soundings that you're looking at? So now to make you stop and fish. Yeah, so now I'm going to start looking for fish. While I'm doing that, I'm just watching the depth there as well. And we're taking note. So if we see one fish, we take note of what depth that fish is. And then we just sort of probably spend a little bit more time in that depth sounding around. And the more fish you see in that depth, of course, the more time you're going to spend looking in that depth. There's actually catchable fish there right now. They look, they look better than what we had earlier and they're a good sized fish too. Yeah, and so you can tell the mood of the fish by what? Oh, just a little bit sort of on how high they are off, are off the bottom. Like those fish there are well off the bottom, so to me they're catchable. When they're hugging bottom, they're always a little bit harder. There are sometimes techniques that you'll get them with by um, just working your lures closer to the bottom, but when they're up there, higher in the water column, you can generally just roll something up through them and catch them. Oh, there yeah, you are, you that's how you want them. <laughs> there he is. Yes. Yeah. Your turn now, Nick. Oh, so Come on, just do it short. Oh, yes. Yes! Good work, mate. Oh. 